Hey everyone, I am Distro and uh, I'm going to run Splinter Cell Conviction, which is the fifth game. And I will start the timer right away. I just have to load Merchant Street Market, which is the first level. And the timer starts um, as soon as I skip this cutscene, which is now. So yeah, welcome to Conviction. Um, I am being joined by my good friend, Director Music and Co-Commentary. And director will oh, also explain hello. a bit the difference between Conviction and the other speedruns in Spinter Soul, the previous ones you saw in the marathon, maybe. Yeah. So, um, Conviction is one of the one of those uh, games where you know they try to make it more mainstream by including a bunch of you know action elements, and it's uh, compared to the older games, it's actually massively different in terms of pacing and how the game kind of works. Uh, but also the the changes are also very present in the speedrun itself. Uh, if you're familiar with the older game's speedruns, we have many commonly occurring elements like uh, dialogue skipping, quick save, quick loads. Uh, we have, um, you know, crouch spamming, things like that. Um, here, it's, it's a different story. Um, and especially if you've seen... Uh, the last run by Distro of Chaos Theory, any percent. Be ready to forget everything you know about Splinter Cell Speed Running because this is a whole different game. It's basically um, John Wick meets Splinter Cell. Um, I think that's a very, 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 um, very good assessment of what you're about to see. And uh, there's so much more happening in Conviction than in any other game. I would probably be confident in saying that because right after this introductory cutscene ends we're going to be starting with a very very strong decision uh that is uh, basically abandon the gameplay as intended gameplay and we just make our own rules from now on so the first thing distro does is he does an out of bounds he kind of rubbed against that uh, little sort of uh wall and uh, that allowed him to go out of bounds and here he's looking for a very specific spot to kind of fall through the map and as he will be falling down uh, the height value will go from the most negative to the most positive value so you will see Sam teleport very very high up in the air in just a moment and after he does that he needs to um, hit a very very precise spot to uh, there we go um, there, there was. You may have noticed there was a little stutter there, which meant that there was a loading uh, trigger that uh, Distro got, and that allows allows us to um, basically skip a portion of gameplay and just carry on like nothing ever happened. You know, I think it also skips like a flash, uh, like a flashback uh, sequence, which is also acts as a tutorial. And of course, we are experts at the game because we are speedrunners. We also see uh, Dimitri Gramkos, who is one of the bad guys, just teleports straight to the toilet. <laughs> um, because I, mean, I like that. Uh, look, you know, we all have our we all have our uh, needs and our uh, our priorities sometimes. And uh, here, what you will see uh, happen is Distro, or well, not Distro, but Sam will interrogate this uh, this baddie, this bad guy uh, Gramkos. And there are different variations of the inter like the interrogation animation, um, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure which exactly uh, one is the fastest, but it can save like a third of a second or something if you get the fastest. This is the animation. fastest, the one with the headbot. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, and yeah, um, we yeah, actually sure. skipped a lot of flashbacks at the beginning. So in terms of like the map, we didn't skip much, but in terms of like timing, because we have like flashbacks and a bunch of backgrounds information uh we just skipped all of that basically while they're doing that crazy trick at the beginning and um, another thing during interrogations if you're close to some um objects like for instance these uh toilets there um you will actually interact with them when you interrogate someone it kind of looks cool depending on what animation it is but the slow uh, the those are slower than the default animations that i'm doing and they're like three possible ones the director mentioned and the headbutt is the fastest one don't tell him, I now, at the beginning of this level, um, I just did a retry checkpoint at the beginning, which skips uh, basically the fade-in effect or like, there's like the camera panning into the gameplay effect. It's super slow and we can just revert the checkpoint and skip that. And um, I just did the skip at the door. You're supposed to like look through the door with a mirror 
But what I did is I just cancelled the animation while, after starting it and um, it thinks I did check the door and then I can just continue and uh, skip it. And over here I just run past a bunch of enemies. I shoot down the chandelier which will stun these guys. Or actually kill them. And this is a weapon stash. Um, it gives you ammo but it also allows me to pick up the 5.7. If you look at the bottom right you see four arrows. That's uh, mark and, uh, for the mark, mark and execute system. And whenever you uh, CQC any enemies, uh, like if you knock them out from close combat, um, you will get the mark and execute meter. Um, and depending on what weapon you have, you can uh, mark different uh, amounts of people. For instance, with the 5, 7, 4, which is the maximum. So I can mark four people and then press a button and then there's an animation where I just quickly take them out. And then here you see me spam a bunch of grenades. Which will stun the enemies for a few seconds. Um, actually, yeah, it's a bit unlucky with the RNG here, but it's fine. And um, there are also some other items we'll talk about uh, later um, during a downtime in the in the mid game. Uh, we'll talk about equipment more. Yeah, now, and here... I actually have a question. Jesus, I yeah. Um, um, I think this um, this this speed run is new game plus, right? Uh, technically, yes, because I have all the weapons unlocked already. Yes, it is new game plus. So you just saw me revert while entering uh, this building, and what that did is I uh, skipped a bunch because all the enemies are despawned now. And uh, you see the mark and execute here. I mark four enemies, just can quickly take them out, and I have to interrogate Cobin, which is this guy. Were you saying something about my daughter? But yeah, it's a good question, director. It is a new game plus. Um, I have unlocked all the um, weapons and their upgrades already. So now, yeah, now we have like um, Tell me why. Yeah, a, a very unskippable <laughs> interrogation All sequence, which is uh, pretty slow, I would say. But uh, this is going to be a common theme with conviction. You will see later. It was just a job. He just gave me a picture. Yeah, I can actually talk about um, that skip again. When I entered the mansion, you saw that guard in front of me, and I got a checkpoint during that. I reverted it, put me further into the building, which is quite convenient, and all the enemies were despawned. So that's kind of cool. Just a very convenient skip that's possible. And um, yeah, we just go through a bunch of cutscenes now. Uh, this is the biggest downtime in the game. And uh, we can actually talk not the about random stuff if you want, Director. Do you have anything to talk about? <laughs> yeah, there's actually um, um, a sort of a discussion point I would like to bring out. You know, maybe that would be... Uh, uh, in, in 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 the theme of Splinter Cell, on topic for for the game here, um, you know, if you could like say take any ten levels from all the Splinter Cell games, uh, and you know, put them into one single Splinter Cell, sort of like in Essentials fashion, um, which levels do you think would they be? Casually or speedrunning wise? Um, since we're having a speedrun here, I think maybe we can talk about the speedrunning aspect. Okay, so I'll think about it. From Synthesil 1, I think I would include CIA. And Kalina Tech, maybe. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Kalina Tech, not so sure about, but that's a fun one, I think. In Pandora Tomorrow, I would include... Um... Hmm, that's a good question. What would I include Dilly? in Pandora? Dilly? Dilly, definitely not. <laughs> 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 I think I would include um, Jerusalem maybe because of the music. Yeah. And, and then in Chaos Theory, I think I would include Bank and maybe this place. No, Hokkaido. Okay. Hokkaido. So that's like six, right? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Hokkaido and this place is six. Then uh, from Double Agent, I think I would include Shanghai just for the memes. Uh, there's a new skip there, which uh, is kind of hilarious. <coughs> and what else do we have? Uh, from Conviction, I would want to add... Um, hmm. That is a good question. I think third echelon and uh, Michigan Avenue Reservoir maybe, and then from Blacklist uh, maybe Special Mission HQ, but it's hard to say. It's a good question.
find out what he knows about mm, that's that's interesting i mean from my perspective you know i'm a diehard classic splinter cell games fan you know i'm not really uh let's say well i like all of splinter cell games but you know i'm more keen on those you know earlier ones so my choices would probably heavily revolve around those so um yeah i guess i can run down my list if you want to yeah go for it well i'll keep that in mind um just before you start one. um if oh, anyone yeah. is sensitive to okay. violence uh there's gonna be um a scene where sam fisher will have to basically slap grim's daughter the lady that you see there yeah, yeah, a few yeah. times if you're sensitive to that come back in like around three minutes from now three and a half minutes maybe um just enough why it's actually story related she wants it because uh it's to like have an alibi because she helps Sam Fisher to get out and she wants to not look suspicious. So she's like, hey, beat me up. So it looks real. So yeah, director, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, so from Splinter Cell 1, I would probably take, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Chinese Embassy 2. Mm. Um, I guess also uh, CIA, I'm, all, I'm also a big fan of that level. Pandora, I would say Komodo. I love, I like that level. Um, and probably LAX. It's one of my favorites in the game, from the speedrun perspective. Even though it's very stressful. Um, I guess from Chaos Theory, definitely Bank. Um, and maybe this. No, Penthouse. Penthouse. It's. For me, it's just, you know, it's cool that you can use the sniper thing, the sniper attachment. It's very, very rewarding. Um, and, uh, I don't know. Actually, one thing I'll, I'll surprise you with, I really like the exclusive essentials level. <laughs> I don't even know which one that is. I've never seen it. it, it it's a level called uh, Norte de, de Santander or something. It's, it's like an introductory level where you save Shetland. I see. And definitely heard that before. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I kind of like that as well. Um, but uh, from, I guess I also like the Shanghai level from Double Agent. It's a cool scenery, you know. You're on the on top of a skyscraper, just kind of ziplining around the you know the windows and stuff. Um, but and I also like that you know from speedrunning perspective, I like that. Um, uh, that new, tr like, out of bounds where you can just kind of skip a, a huge chunk of that uh, beginning section. So, um, yeah. Also, uh, you know, um, one thing I guess we can talk about is uh, the the game physics of Conviction. Um, maybe maybe you, uh, you want to have a bit of insight into that. Okay. Which game physics are you referring to specifically? I need to know. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the. <laughs> My car is just outside their security gate. It's yeah, I'm not going to talk about that, but um, yeah, there are um, two main methods you will see to go out of bounds, basically, or clip through stuff. And the first one is literally a roll, and the second one is a cover. Uh, well, you turn on the cover, it's called cover clip. You'll see both of them in this level. It has like five minutes of an intro, like cutscene or like a sequence where you have to press C. It's very, very stimulating, I guess, in the speedrun. So that's a massive downtime. But then after that, the level is basically almost skipped entirely. Spoiler alert, I guess. But um, you will see the two methods of uh, clipping, like almost back to back, which is quite convenient. But first I have to, um, I'm going to CQC this guy so I get my mark and execute meter filled up. I'm gonna mark these guys, but I'm not gonna mark and execute them because I need it later. But I marked them so I can see when they die. Um, the arrow disappears on their head, which is quite convenient. So, you can gain height by uh, doing a crab leg kind of uh, movement here. Kind of weird. This is a tricky which is the same, part. Which is the same way you clipped out in the first level as well, right? Uh, yes, it is. This is a very difficult clip, so I can hope I can get it. There we go. So that was a roll clip. Nice. And um, the way it works is like collision glitches out entirely in this game when you have a specific, like if when you're high enough. I don't know why exactly, but that's just how it is. But yeah, I'm inbounds again and uh, I skipped a bunch of load triggers. So there are no enemies here. I can just run through, which is really convenient. And it looks cool, I think. 
Um, also, that eerie silence just in the background. Where yeah, that's also true. But it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of nice. It's soothing. It's yeah, can, eerily uh, soothing. Yeah, before the frag grenade explosions that you'll have to do. It's kind of like a nice uh, chill moment for your ears. Yeah, I um, picked up a frag grenade and went to the weapon stash to give me more frag grenades. And I picked up the 5.7 again because it has more uh, mark and execute arrows. And now I will do something called the nade boost. I will throw a nade and aim in a specific way so I get on the tires. Again, I have extra height. And now you see the second method of clipping. This is a cover clip. And magic. I don't know why this works, but it's uh, kind of cool. <laughs> so... Playing. Yeah, I think we... I think it's just part of the ragdoll physics quirks, you know. Maybe, maybe way. we will never know. But yeah, mark and execute. You can see why it's very convenient here. Also, shot the grenade inside. There were two enemies, and they both died to the grenades. And um, that was supposed to be a bit clear, but um, speed run, you know. Now um, exactly. we go through this door, which will end the level, and we will enter the Iraq level. And um, this game kind of changed to the first-person shooter all of a sudden. Um, and the funny part about this next level is that uh, the fastest way to move is to do a sideways crap walk type of thing. It's kind of weird, but it's way faster than going forward for whatever reason. So you'll see that a lot now. It's also very counterintuitive, I would say. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, I just tried to go past the first set of enemies. Um, when the meter um, in the hut, it says 225 right now. When it goes to 183, I know I'm close to the truck and I have to like um, basically move around it. I have that memorized. So you will see me yeah, take... And then... Whoops. Oh, it's later. It's 163, isn't it? Yeah, I have it not memorized. Yeah. And then you will see um, more clipping here in just a second. But first I have to uh, deal with a bunch of enemies. And I don't have a checkpoint. Uh, the one I have is at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to play it a bit safe for the marathon. Because the last thing you want to do is die because it's super slow in this level. But I think my grain was perfect. Almost everyone died, right? Everyone died. Cool. Nice. All right. Yeah, I mean, grenade placements in this game come a long way, I think, in helping you. Yeah. I get a checkpoint here, so that's good. And now I do another nade boost. But I have to aim very precisely around this uh, plant, and I go out of bounds now, and I will skip all the other enemies by just, you know, maneuvering around from out of bounds. Yeah, and it's, it's actually pretty interesting that, you know, this out of bounds, like... Uh environment objects like these little hills and rocks are actually you know they have collisions which you know normally you wouldn't expect an out of bounds area to have many collisions but here you can just walk around like you know you're just walking around the neighborhood and um yeah a bit of sightseeing as you can see just not looking at the sights but looking <laughs> towards uh Spawning in ruins and hills. By the way, this game usually looks a lot better, but I'm playing on minimum graphics because uh, the plants are different and they have collision. Like if you play on high graphics, you can't do some of the auto bound stuff because you can't get enough height because, uh, well, just different collision. All right, we're going inbounds now. Uh, I'm going to slide into this building. And I will throw a nade and it will open the door for me. It will destroy it and it will boost me up at the same time, so that's nice. And now I go to the uh, end section of the level. Um, there's two guards, but I just have to shoot them quickly and then interact with uh, Sam Fisher, because that's the plot twist of this level. You're not Sam Fisher in this level, you're Victor Cost. And we're saving Sam. No way, no way. And now we get to a big clear at the end and basically have to kill enough enemies for the ending cutscene to start. And I have a specific sequence uh, where I like kill the enemies, but it's a bit random and quite tricky. So hopefully this will be fine. And um, I think during the clear, I will hand over the commentary to the director because I will have to focus for like, uh, I think 20 seconds or so. Yeah, of course. Um, so now that we, uh, now that this trip... 
saved Sam Fisher from uh, suffering. Uh, they still have to make their way out of out of there or wait until backup arrives. And uh, here you will see a bunch of action going on as a distro uh, takes down enemies in a very specific fashion. It's also a very loud section, I would say. Probably one of the louder ones in the speed run. And there's a lot going on. And um, here you can see just Sam and Vic getting overwhelmed. Yeah, actually, there is, uh, um, towards the end of the clear, there's a bunch of enemies spawning in the middle, and I just free throw a grenade where the truck is, and all the enemies in the background just die as they spawn, and that's why this uh, clear goes so fast. Yeah, normally this takes like at least a couple of minutes. Also, one thing I, reali I, I realized, this level is like super... You know, the, the, the colors of, of this level are just so dull. Yeah. It's very gray-bluish. And uh, after all this... We're going back to present day to another level where actually we will meet Vic as well. Just this time as Sam Fisher, the other way around. Um, and um, yeah, now we're uh, in this uh, very fun and uh, very, I would say, non densely populated theme park. Um, what is this level called exactly? What's uh, the location name? I think it's called uh, Washington Monument. And yeah. uh, we have to basically interrogate these three guys that are looking for us. They're like marked with X's. And I will wait for this guy to come to the shadows. I just grab him here and I interrogate him. And every time I interrogate one of them and um, after they're knocked out, a few seconds after that, I get a checkpoint. It's going to be relevant soon. But um, what you need to know is, or uh, like an explanation that will make uh, things make more sense soon is that the guards have like a scripted pathing, but how fast they move is a bit random. But uh, the first two guards are in a very good spot. Um, like you can see this guy's right here next to the first one, so I just can go, go get him right away. But the third guy is in a horrible spot by now. And the fun part is if I get a checkpoint and revert it, his position is um, basically reset. And if I revert after the next checkpoint that I get after knocking out this guy, I will be in a position where I'm close to third guard and I can just quickly grab him and it's significantly faster than just waiting um, where he is right now. Alright. Once I see a freeze, uh, like a tiny freeze, I know I got a checkpoint. That's what I'm waiting for right now. Just zooming around. Let me see if I can see it. There it is. And yeah, as I said, this puts me in a very much better position as for the guard. You see, he's right next to me now. That's a really nice time save. Just have to make sure I grab him when he comes to the shadow. Also, another fun fact that someone once mentioned to me in my chat and I never got it out of my head. It's like living rent free in my head. This is a fun fair, but you don't see a single kid anywhere. It's just adults. I always thought that was kind of oh, funny. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's right. That, that's definitely interesting. I mean, it it's makes like sense. An adults thing. I don't know. Because it's like, uh, you know, a violent game. That's why they didn't put kids in it. But uh, it's kind of funny if you think about it. There's not a single kid. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> fair. Sorry. Um, another thing I want to quickly mention is that you, you may have noticed that when uh, Sam enters darker areas, uh, the, the screen turns black and white. And in previous games, you would have like a separate meter or any other indicator that you're in darkness and you're invisible. But in this game, they went ultra minimalistic and they just decided that, you know, we're just going to remove all the colors when you're in the, in the dark. And uh, some people like it, some people don't. It's, it's not, you know, it's a very polarizing, I would say, addition to the game. But uh, yeah, there are ways of disabling it if, if you know... You really, really don't like it. I didn't get you anything. Yeah, but not a lot in speedrun. Yeah, of course. You know, you just for, 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 uh, for, uh, you know, all sorts of security measures. We, we, we like to keep it vanilla. Yeah. Also, um, so here, yeah, yeah, we have a bit of downtime, but I can. We just got a satchel with like some equipment. We can talk about the equipment quickly. We have different types of grenades. Flash grenades have explanatory, like any other game, you stun enemies for a few seconds. EMP, same idea, um, without the flash effect. Uh, we have frag grenades, 
Also, ex self explanatory, just a normal grenade, uh, explosive. Uh, we have uh, EMP generators, which you will see soon, which will stun enemies for a few seconds when you activate them. And uh, there's other um, stuff too. There's like proximity mines, which is actually from DLC. Uh, so, again, this is New Game Plus with the DLC content. Um, and proximity mines is basically a mine you just throw some somewhere, and whenever an enemy is close to it, it explodes. You also have remote mines, which you can throw, and then you can activate when it will blow up. And um, I think there are also... Is there smoke in this game? I don't actually remember. We don't use it in the speedrun. That's a good question. I don't remember either. Also, you just saw Sam just eagerly wait for the doors to open. He was just kind of... Uh, like doing some... Uh, yeah. You just saw the portable EMP in action. I like I have three of them. If you see, look at the bottom right, I have two left. I just time it in a way that um, I'm most likely to survive because there's a bunch of enemies here and basically just YOLO run through. But you see the MP uh, works pretty well. And you will also see remote mines in action very, very, very soon. First the EMP here. And then uh, there's a bunch of enemies here, just remote mine them. You will see this a lot during the speed run. We just spam grenades. It's kind of fun, I would say. <laughs> And that's the end of the level. Actually, no, wait. We have this amazing sequence where you actually pro press forward. It's an interactive cutscene thing. You just walk forward once you hit the trigger. The mission is over. I never did know. Yeah, and know. in the in in the individual level category of this level, this part is also included in the speed run. You have to do it. Once again, we skip the pan, uh, like the fade in pan in. I don't know what to call that, but there's like a transition where you get to gameplay. We just skip that by reverting again. Um, we ignore this Skipping guy. All the cool effects. And this is called White Box. Uh, this is a really long level, casually. In the speedrun, we was well, spoiler alert, <laughs> skip almost all of it. And this is actually the newest um, skip in the game. Well, skip variation. Uh, because. If you watch a world record, you will see something different strat-wise than what I'm going to do now. Um, it's basically the same skip, but uh, this variation is five seconds faster, that you will see. And um, hopefully we'll, I will get it. But yeah, the beginning is just getting to the building. Um, just a lot of parkouring. Yeah, basically of... Assassin's Creed. Basically, yes, yeah. Or John Wick meets Splinter Cell meets Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The list keeps growing. By the way, are you going to do that uh, uh, EMP generator um, trick that is super risky? Or um, Are you talking about the cutscene At the very skip? end of the level. Cutscene skip, yeah. right? Yes, I will. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to I that it, soon. It, it, I remember it was, uh, at least a while back, it was considered pretty scary. But uh, this part right here may look scary, but uh, it's actually very impressive, I would say, that, uh, you know... We have these uh, out of bounds that you can just oh, I actually missed it. Use like that. That's oh, a, that's a new variation of the skip. I just tried it and I missed it. But I'll try again. Yeah, no worries. I mean, hitting those like uh, exact spots is probably not as easy as it looks, especially with you know, if you're not used to the movement, which I'm pretty sure Distro is, but. Uh, you know, it's a it's a very precise endeavor because as you can see you know we're you know here we see a lot of gameplay being skipped even the game doesn't really know what to render anymore um but hopefully uh, yeah i got the checkpoint of time there we go uh after all that crazy jumping around and uh floating in space we get to uh, the cutscene skip. Yeah, okay, so what happens here, I will time my portable EMP precisely and then activ activate this thing and I will want I want to be shot during the interaction and that gives me a checkpoint and when I revert that, I basically skip a pretty long cutscene actually, I don't know how long it is, maybe like half a minute where you like see that guy on the controls being basically electrocuted but yeah, we just skipped all of that so you want to be shot there, and then um, you get a checkpoint, and you can skip it. Kind of convenient. Now we're going to the end of the level, and uh, the next level is called uh, Lincoln Memorial. There's actually a lot of background story to that level speedrunning-wise. There used to be a skip called Lincoln Skip, 
um, and it was inconsistent. Literally, the skip consisted of just reverting the game a bunch of times until you get the skip. It was completely random. We don't understand how it works. It only works on the Steam version for some reason, which I don't understand either. At least I've been told. Uh, but you just revert checkpoint until you skip the surveillance part of this level and you have to interrogate a, a guy and then you have to like, go to chase the sequence. We found a new skip recently, um, which is not random. It skips the surveillance as well and it skips the interrogation. So not only is it more consistent, or like, like um, it's, not, it's not random, but uh, it's also faster by a significant amount. And this is actually a really, really difficult trick, so I'm going to have to focus. Yeah, and uh, here, uh, you know, he, he, Distro will utilize one of those clipping methods that, uh, that were showcased um, er in earlier levels, like the airfield one. Um, however, these cover clips and, um, you know, um, other clipping methods, they really require a lot of precision because uh, you need to have the angle just right you need to have your position just right and uh, even then sometimes the game will just outright refuse to to let you through but hopefully yeah we will see distro coming through that fence in just a moment uh, another f fun thing here it's you know it's a very interesting setting for the level where you know you don't have any weapons and it's in broad daylight where uh, you're acting as a civilian and basically you're you know in casual gameplay, you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to be an employee or something and then gain access to those back areas. But in speedrunning, again, we are only concerned with getting to our end objective in one piece as fast as possible. It looks like this fence is being really stubborn today. Yeah, I'm actually being quite unlucky with the rules. Okay, this could work. Ah, okay, and uh, there we go. There we go. So that took a bit of time, as you can see, but uh, luckily this trail went, uh, made it through. And here, um, in casual game gameplay, here you you, were, you would chase uh, this, uh, I guess, a rogue policeman or something like that, or like a mercenary dressed it's as an, a policeman. Yeah, it's an assassin. Yeah, and you can see that there's no one here, but that's because we didn't load in any previous checkpoints that would spawn them and other actors in, in, in this uh, sequence. However, as Distro approaches further and further into where we would normally go in casual gameplay, uh, I think right after um, Distro climbs this um, th th these uh, bunch of bricks, and then uh, as soon as he drops down here, the the assassin and everyone else will spawn, and then uh, the the chase will commence again. And as you can see, now we're back into normal gameplay. Uh, and normally, with... you have a different running animation here. Um, during this sequence specifically. If I revert the checkpoint, I'll go for the other running animation. But it turns out that um, using the default animation um, with the like glitch is slightly, really slightly faster than just reverting. Yeah, and um, of course, it's uh, impossible to ever catch up to this uh, assassin. You know, there's no way. Uh, and it's done on purpose. However, uh, there are going to be things happening in just a moment, which are going to be uh, quite shocking. It's going to be a huge turn of events. And uh, this is where things will get a little bit uh, chaotic. However, uh, also fun fact, these NPCs can sometimes be a bit of a... They tend to have a tendency to, to, to block the path for you, but... Oh yeah, this uh, is a cutscene skip. Um, you get a checkpoint right as that starts, and then you can just revert and go faster into the next sequence uh, segment, basically. Now we're here, uh, we have a big clear. But I was stopped by headshotting the first guy and then uh, CQCing the other one. You saw me delay my shots a bit, but that's because uh, they are invincible for, well, a few seconds until they start moving. Yeah, and if you're wondering how Distro knows where all the cars and enemies will be stopping and getting out, is because these pawns are set. Um, they're not random. Um, they're just scripted to stop here in certain locations and at certain times. And they basically spawn in after every, let's say, wave is completed. And I think that was all with the waves, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, that's the wrap on uh, Lincoln Memorial.
By the way, we'll be seeing a bunch of those flashbacks throughout the, the, the speed run. I'm actually thinking about the flash forward that's at the end of the game. Oh yeah, sorry, flash forward. Well, you know, it's it, it kind of looks like a flashback, but it's actually a foreshadowing. Yeah, the, um, the whole game is basically a flashback, in a way. Yeah, 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 you could say that. Um, so now I'm um, pretty sure Distro's uh, going to want to maybe focus for a little bit. Uh, this is third echelon, and the beginning part of it is, I think, pretty, pretty annoying to get uh, to get right, or at least one of the parking lot sequences. Not sure when that comes exactly, but... Uh, Actually, I can handle commentary a... for a bit until uh, the next sequence. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I bet, first of all, knocked out an NPC and touched his body because he has a key card for the elevator coming up. That's uh, You have to do that. You have to at least kill one of them or knock out one of them and then get their key card. And then um, I have to place uh, two C4 charges, but I'm doing a more marathon save strat. There's, a, I think, an 11 second faster strat than what I'm doing right now. But this is way safer for the marathon. And after planting this C4, I get a checkpoint. And um, I revert the checkpoint because it will reset the guard's position. Um, like all the guards are reset now. And yeah. this is good I guess, because I can go to the elevator yeah. without any issues now. Yeah, and uh, one thing to keep in mind, the reason why I destroyed for strat is because um, uh, here you are not allowed to be detected at all. At least not until you, you know, hit a certain part of the level. And uh, if you do get detected, you know, that fails the mission. So Sam, that's why he had to be careful. One thing, third echelon, and always... All right, now um, I do another reaver checkpoint to skip a cutscene. That's very common in this game. And we go for another cutscene that I can't skip. But after this cutscene, that's when conviction speedruns start to really shine and become just more and more crazy. We will have skip after skip after skip after skip uh, for a while. As if, as if as if it weren't crazy enough. But yeah, that's completely true. And um, just as an FYI, I will not get a checkpoint uh, for like, I think like three or four tricks back to back. If I mess up, it's bad. So scary for a marathon, but I'll try my best. Especially, you can, you can also stop like if you mess up, but we'll see what happens. I mean that's the fun of it, you know. You just sometimes get the, you know, you have to risk for the for the sweet reward. Um, and you know, once you do get all these, it's very very satisfying to what to witness everything coming together into this crazy speed run. And in fact, uh, the way Distro will start off is by doing another one of those uh, crab walking, rubbering, bending up upwards on the railing here. Uh, it's a bit finicky here. It takes it takes a while to get it. Um, and uh, eventually, there we go, um, eventually Distro uh, gets it here and that allows him to do a, um, a clip through here by doing the, the roll. And uh, that, also gave, uh, that also gave him a checkpoint which he reverted to, to um, uh, continue forward through the lasers here. It's very important that he you know, doesn't trigger the lasers because we're supposed to be stealthy here. Um, and, um, yeah. When I hit the laser, the turret will shoot me down, basically. But also, this was the last checkpoint you will see for a while, so it's really important that I don't mess up here, and it's getting crazy. Yeah, Director, um, you may continue. Yeah, yeah. So, what Distro is doing here is, um, basically, you're supposed to have a confrontation with Coben for the second time here. Um, and you can actually hear him in the in the background. Um, but what Distro is doing here is, uh, he's setting a, he's setting up a very, um, elaborate, uh, I think it's called Third Echelon Skip, right? Um, um, I don't know, there's multiple back-to-back. -back. I think this is Coben Skip in Third Echelon, but I'm not actually sure. To yeah, yeah, but, you know, th this is uh, like one of the, probably the most prominent ones, for sure, because there's a long setup to it, and here, uh, I think this is like the cover skip, right? Yeah. Um, where, uh, there we go, Distro clipped through, oh, out of I bounds. Up. I should have to revert. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes these these re reverts happen because, as I said, you know, these out of bounds things are very precise endeavors where you have to literally, uh, you know, be very very on point with your movement and your angles and uh, your positioning. And uh, uh, the unfortunate thing about this clip uh, is that there is a very elaborate setup. You know, you see him uh, rolling here on the railings and. Uh, being very careful about the movement, but uh, luckily, 
this turn knows what he's doing. He can get back here in no time. And uh, here we see him clip again. And you will also see him shoot here to kind of bounce backwards. And now he's completely out of bounds. And he will quickly fall into bounds um, in just a moment. But before he does that, he, he's going to uh, walk around a little bit forward. And then another cover skip here. Um, now, I'm not sure which variation Distro will do. Um, probably the, the cola skip here uh, by the vending machine with the Coca-Cola. Or not Coca-Cola, just no brand cola. Um, and uh, that allowed him with that frag grenade to clip through uh, to another part of the map where basically he skipped a very slow sort of sequence where y you have like... A Cutscene with Lambert and uh, Grimm's daughter and all this, all this stuff, and then you have a lot of shootouts going on, going out of this building. But uh, Distro skipped all of that in a spectacular fashion, and that takes him to, I believe, Michigan Avenue Reservoir. Correct. Yeah. So over here, um, I will stun the enemies uh, by timing multiple EMPs. I have to be careful not to mess up here because I don't want to be shot down. And I'm going to go out of bounds, um, off camera, with, like specific rolls. Let me see if I can get it. That looks good. I think I got it. Yeah. So um, another scary thing is I don't have a checkpoint again, so I have to hopefully get this first try. And it's very precise too, so this could be a bit scary. Yeah, this uh, this looks pretty similar in terms of execution to um, at first to the the first out of bounds in the game. However, it's just a regular out of bounds it's not any crazy teleportation uh stuff going here but um yeah there's gonna be a, a a lot more out of bounds on this level so definitely stay tuned for that yeah that was a massive skip now um right about then it's also a relatively new variation like the way to go out of bounds was different back in the day uh, very recently you used to like nade clip through an invisible barrier but now you do that like off camera roll and also the way to go also, inbounds is different as well. Yeah. yeah. And also you saw like a bunch of enemies. Um, let me just tell you right off the bat, Distro has a plan for that. And it's nothing very elaborate. It's just same old good old EMPs. And they come really in handy in situations like that. And that's going to be coming in handy in uh, some other sections later on as well. All right, we will see a bunch of nade clipping here. Um, I will basically gain height through... Oh, that's the wrong grenade. My bad. Actually, I'm going to revert that for um, because I want more grenades. Yeah, yeah I was and, supposed uh, to use the remote mine. I had frag grenades equipped. And I think what helps with these uh, like grenade clips is that you're playing on rookie difficulty. You know, there are different different difficulty settings for the game. Um, and I th I might be mistaken, but on a higher difficulty, you take more damage, probably. You just die, yeah. So, yeah, so it's important that you play on the rookie difficulty to actually pull, pull these stunts off. Come on. Okay, that should work, I believe. Unless I get stuck here. Really? Come on. Well, Come that, on. Was, that was interesting. It should Ooh, be fine. There we go. All right. We skip a lot of the level here there's like a massive clear um you have to fight so many enemies it's like a helicopter is annoying and now we can just go out of bounds to the end of the level and we skip a bunch of load triggers so the aforementioned helicopter is actually not loaded incorrectly so we see a cutscene with an invisible helicopter it's basically a floating turret it's kind of funny um, yeah basically sam fisher will be just scared of uh, covering away from just air it's also kind of funny that every building in the background is white except for the White House. Well, it's technically the oh, Capitol yeah, yeah, building, that's but... True. Uh, that's true. But it's, I think it's funny. But yeah, you see this helicopter that's invisible now because of all the skipping. Now we have this uh, cutscene where Sam reunites with his daughter. Um, so that's like... One of the most important game uh, game points, story-wise, because uh, um, should we talk about the story a bit? Or yeah, I mean we we can definitely. Um, 
Yeah, so basically, I guess this is a bit of a spoiler. So if you don't like spoilers, Sarah. you should probably skip a bit like a minute or something, maybe 30 seconds. Yeah. But uh, in Double Agent, it is revealed that uh, Sam's daughter, Sarah, has been killed. And then Conviction is basically him chasing a rumor that, you know, basically she might be alive. And then uh, she works with Anna Grimm's daughter, who actually brings her back to him. And that's the very climactic um, moment that we just saw. But after all that, we are now in downtown district, which has surprises of its own. Strike. Well, I missed one. No, I, was that, that was a spare. That, yeah, was, a spare. that was a spare. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun to just uh, spam grenades sometimes. No. Which there are going to be plenty of in this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one thing I want to mention is that in this sequence, I can't run anymore because a bunch of civilians are just, you know, supposed to be dramatic. But there's a huge EMP that went off. The whole city is in shambles. But I prefer the explanation that um, the real reason why this chaos happened is because it says speed limit 25 and someone went uh, above that and this is the result. So this is why you should never be speeding. I mean, just speed running. We're, we're we're not following the rules here. We're breaking the law by speed running. It's also why we're walking slower. We don't want to speed. We don't want to. Oh, oh! I think I went too fast. Oops! Another explosion. My bad. Always respect the speed limit. But yeah, after I get around Someone the corner, really went fast. I will get back to the normal gameplay, and it's going to be a lot of run and gunning, or like throw grenades and running, and occasional gunning. Yeah, running and grenading. And also one thing that is very apparent when you play on rookie difficulty is that in some capacity, um, also those vehicles just stop it just immediately. That's, that's pretty funny. Um, but you can see that Distro is able to sustain a lot of damage from the enemies and that's be in large part thanks to the difficulty that he's playing on. This definitely wouldn't be sustainable on like higher difficulty. I would still like to mention that you die super fast compared to other spins of the games in this one. It's just that I time my grenades so well that uh, the enemies don't really get shots on me. It was a for the most yeah, part. Yeah, and I think I think wait, is this the, the first Splinter Cell game where you have health regen? No, I think Double Agent. Double Agent has health. Yeah. I mean, another out of bounds here. Good for yeah. Sorry. Don't worry. There's normally a bunch of enemies there, and um, the out of bounds I'm doing is uh, skipping all of the enemies. But getting in bounds is super inconsistent. So we have to rely on marathon um, luck. In actual, like I actually mean luck. I have to get lucky to get in bounds now. If I miss it, I have four mines and four tries. If I miss it, I'll just play the game um, the sequence normally. But I hope this works. This is a cool well, skip. I, I wanted you... to show it off. I wish you most of luck. Thanks. Maybe go more to the right. Come on. Come on. Ugh. Oh, first try. There we go. Wow. Nice. Talk about marathon luck, huh? Actually, yes. And ironically, Actually, yes. marathon luck working <laughs> yeah unbelievable that is super inconsistent by the way i'm glad i got the first try <laughs> you have no idea so yeah now we're in uh, i think i believe this is the final level yeah white yeah white house yeah and here we have immediately just a bunch of running and grenading which is as you may have noticed already uh very very running running yeah the chandelier was on the enemies for a few seconds, just enough for me to get past them. Um, and here we have to interrogate the vice president, um, but first I have to get rid of the enemies. I just throw Who's a actually a mine. bad guy, just to give context. This sounds like, you know, very, very bad, but he's a bad guy in this story, so... I still wouldn't recommend doing it IRL, just saying. Even yeah, if the yeah, vice president is a bad guy, definitely not don't recommend. do it. Definitely. Also, oh, we can pretend and this is Agent 47 from Hitman. Yeah, yeah, basically, you know, we, all we need is just Solid Snake just appearing 
from the background. Oh, really? A little bit graphic, maybe? Oh, oh, you shot me! Oh, you know, you need to work on that whole son of a bitch. All right, so there's going to be a bunch of enemies here. Um, the door is going to open. They're going to rush, and there's a bunch of enemies in the room, like, spread out. And the idea is I will just try to YOLO my way through. That's the um, tornado IQ strat I have. Just get lucky on YOLO. I just spam some nades to be more lucky to survive, and there we go. Now we get to the last segment of um, the speed run, basically. And we start again with a bunch of run and gunning or run aiding again. There's a kitchen section, which is quite random. If I get unlucky, I might die. But that was really good. There's a turret here, but I will just uh, use movement where I know that I will survive. And um, because the turret is annoying, I just throw a remote mine behind it and then get rid of the NPC that's shooting it. There we go, perfect. It's actually way harder to survive that than it uh, looks at first. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of precision involved. And actually, speaking of precision, there's going to be a very precise... Uh, cover clip that Distro will have to do in just a moment. Um, which, you know, is very, very crucial, especially in, you know, PB setting runs where you're aiming for a personal best time. That's yeah, the last and, big boss uh, of the speed run, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's not even like the last, last part of the game, but, you know, it's the true final boss for sure. And it is right here. I have to line up this table um, in a specific... That's unlucky. In a specific way. Let me, can I still make that work? Uh, you would you it. please stop tabling there, around? Yeah. Thanks. No! Okay. No. This could... I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. It doesn't look good to me. Actually, no, I'm not gonna even bother. I know this isn't gonna work. Uh, more I like how left. this table is just indestructible. This could work if I'm really lucky. If not, I'm gonna just well, rework. I mean, you were lucky with the. Oh, uh, there we go. F marathon luck part two. And I just hit the checkpoint. That's where normally Grim. Uh, that's where the the part that was foreshadowed. Uh, the flash forward you got during the run, where you, like nice uh, Grim is escorting Sam Fisher, and uh, we just went to that hallway uh, without going through the Grim scenes at all. And now we're in the ending sequence. Um, I just have to mark these guys and wait for dialogue. And then after a certain point, I have to press uh, C to uh, take down um, the bad guy in front of us, Reed, and his friends, I guess. And um, yeah, it's pretty much the end of the run. I mean, it's taking like two and a half minutes from here, but uh, in terms of gameplay, it's pretty much it. There's only like some clicks left and uh, some small inputs. Yeah, I mean, the true end of the speed run of Conviction is comically, you know, uh, trivial compared to everything that's leading up to it. Because we usually imagine, like, the, the final sections being very crucial and very, very difficult to pull off correctly and, and precisely. But here is just two minutes of downtime, a bunch of clicks, and boom. Last time I checked, he was dead. Yeah, basically, Reed will approach us now, and then there's like a prompt, um, I think press C to, I don't know what it exactly says, but I'm just gonna spam C until he's close enough, and then it will work. Alright. And now, um, we talk to Reed a bit. Uh, we have two options, we can either shoot him, or um, slap him, like two times, you get the choice two times, and then at the end, you can either shoot him or spare him. It is faster to just shoot him. It fades black. Uh, it fades to black right away, and that's when, um, yeah, when the run finishes. Also, I just shot this guy. It's, it's slightly faster, but it's almost the same speed as slapping him. I will do one slap just for uh, to give you a reference of what it looks like for the memes. Yeah, so we see both scenarios. And the timing will end. Wait, I'm gonna get to that soon, and I just have to press C for a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna slap him now. Alright, so now we see the end of the cutscene for a bit. And um, after that, um, when I get control again, I can either left click to kill him or C to uh, spare him entirely. And I will left click, and that's the last input, and that's where the timing ends officially. So um, basically, when I shoot, it's uh, run over. 
So uh, thank you. let's get ready for time. Any minute. Oval Office is secure. We have the president. Otis Just the final days. moment here, final stretch. Some boring dialogue. All right, this is the end, and pew, it's that's it. That's uh, conviction. Yay. I also like Nicely the end time. Done. It says 54, 45. Thanks. It's like mirrored. I like that. Nice. Well, yeah, that was conviction. Um, I would like to I'm speak out a thank you to Shots Fired that. for um, allowing um, some of the Spinters of Speedruns to be part of it. it I really appreciate that. Um, a shout out to the Spinster community, um, the speedrun community, also the speedrun community as a whole, um, also other games. Um, it's a very nice community and also um, a huge thanks to Director Music for the great kill commentary. Thank you for that, Director. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And um, yeah, if you want to see more uh, Splinter Cell speedruns, I stream them quite actively. I pretty much speedrun every single Splinter Cell main series game. Directing music also uh, speedruns a lot of Splinter Cell games. Um, the first three and Essentials, if I'm not mistaken. The best game ever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, feel free to check us out if you want. And uh, that would be it from my side. I hope.